certainly what I tried to do and prove some of my initial teachers wrong who said that Shakespeare had to be done through a colonial lens, which is why I walked out of the class and have been trying <laughs> to prove them wrong ever since. <laughs> Let's um, talk first about defining classical theatre. What is classical theatre to each of you? I, it, to me, it depends on which lens I'm looking through, uh, which is uh, what I've had to do for the majority of my career, which is navigate identity. So sometimes I'm just an actor, sometimes I'm, sometimes I'm an Indigenous actor, sometimes I'm, I'm an indie actor, actor director sometimes i'm a uh, main stage but i would say that the western canon certainly has a very specific idea of what classical theater is um even with that i've spent my career trying to um mess about with that <laughs> and really and really try to transform those ideas and then from an indigenous perspective or a metis cultural sp perspective there's uh, classical theater is, you know, everything from our drum dances to our potlatches to our uh, gatherings and powwows and, and ceremonies. It's interesting because I guess I'm a bit of a contrarian. And when I was working, uh, when I was making in more independent spaces, um, canonical texts are, are fairly... Uh, unfashionable in those spaces or, or like a, a majority of like approaches to canonical texts are in favor of new work and contemporary performance and and so my provocation was like that you actually can turn these contemporary you can tear them apart you can reinvent them uh, you know and now that I, I sometimes wear a Stratford festival hat um, I poke it, I poke up against those assumptions in different ways. I'm not, I'm not actually sure I know what classical theater means uh, because that so depends on the tradition you're working inside of, but I, I do, Jenny brought in the Western canon, uh, like right off the top, capital W, capital C, Western canon. And um, I've, I've spent a lot of time since I started my job at Stratford uh, trying to interrogate what what a canon means. I'm I'm not particularly interested in in isolating it to the Western canon, but what does canon mean? Because how I how I sort of interpret my role and how I can be useful is in pushing up against the boundaries of what we consider canonical, and not just pushing up against the boundaries, but you know blowing up the boundaries, uh, and really trying to and and so I've thought a lot about like what is a canon? Why do we why do we do these canonical plays and and been thinking about cultural inheritances and, and and bodies of work that tell us about who we are and where we've come from and then the question for what is canonical is immediately predicated on how we identify that we who is the collective for whom this is a cultural inheritance it's really great too ted and just to riff off of that one of the things that i've been contemplating a lot is the assumption that Western, uh, the Western canon is European based and um, or a European structure or, or form of theater. And uh, I don't look, I don't necessarily look at it that way. I um, done a lot of research and reading on the uh, creation of North America. <laughs> um, and, you know, at the turn of the century, there was such a, a concerted effort to create artistic processes that were separate from the European mother in order to create a specific American and Canadian identity and that was in music and theater. And, um, and so when I think of Western, uh, uh, the Western canon, I actually think more in terms of a North American sensibility, which is really based on a colonial mindset and, mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and borrowing from certainly um, uh, a, a Euro European artistic practices, but, uh, but something unto itself and, and comes with a, a that um, comes with an unconscious bias uh, that came along with the creation of, of that, or the hopeful creation of that identity. 
So, mm. so at the turn of the century, there was uh, the creation of an organization called the Order of the Red Men, which still exists today. And in fact, they have new factions. It was a U.S. Um, it's a U.S. Uh, based organization. And the idea of creating that organization, so I'll digress a little bit. The idea of creating that organization was to have white men dress up as indigenous people and do indigenous ceremony to help them navigate the confusion they felt with their identity as American men as opposed to European men. That serves its members. The, the, the mandate of those companies serves its members, which is, which at the time anyway was primarily white men. Um, and while I know that that organization has grown to include other cultural people of other cultural backgrounds, the, 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 it, it serves, still serves the idea of creating American identity. So for me, uh, an American canon or a North American canon, even though if you're looking at using a classical text such, such as Shakespeare, um, still for my mind uh, and more recently serves an American Canadian identity and helps to uphold the unconscious bias that that connects itself to. I like I like Jenny that you go straight to what what the canon or like what we what we interpret the or what what is sort of silently agreed upon as being the the canon of colonial North America uh, what it serves rather than who it's accessible to because those are they're they're two different questions like what what is it in service of and what do, and then I I guess. I asked the like, what do we mean by like, who is it accessible to? Like in 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 legal technical terms, for the most part, it's accessible because for the most part, that stuff's old enough that the like copyrights expired. So like, <laughs> <laughs> sure, like right. take it and run with it. But it, but what what ideologies is it serving? Who does it reflect as it stands or in its in its most in more conservative or traditional takes on that material, who is it reflecting and what ideologies is it holding and what sort of, because canons are collections of stories that create like a, a, a sort of narrative of who we are. Um, and so what is that meta narrative and who is the main character in that meta narrative? It is like the, the white cisgender male American, like largely American capitalist. Um, and we see that narrative upheld again and again in there, but um, is it accessible? Can, can people find themselves in there? I think, you know, both Jenny and I have spent a lot of time working in collaborations with marginalized folks who absolutely can like seize those texts and insert themselves in there and, you know, mm. and, enact some maybe restorative violence on those texts to make some space for for those collaborators inside of that work i think that's why i like working with you and having conversations <laughs> so much dead i'm like i totally understand where you're coming from i think that that is the beauty of of um of texts like shakespeare and, and you, you have i have had these conversations before because it's so based in in this uh, in i mean shakespeare's writing is so based on, in the power of relationship that uh, human relationship that it it, it it is can be explored from a number of, of different points of view which is um, certainly what i tried to do and prove some of my initial teachers wrong who said that shakespeare had to be done through a colonial lens which is why i walked out of the class and have been trying <laughs> to prove them wrong ever since <laughs> I don't know if I'm allowed to swear in here. Um, what is this BS standard of white excellence that allowed someone like Harold Harold Bloom, uh, without any adjectives in the middle, um, to decide what what is in and what is out?